I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm in Flapjaw space with a tuning fork does a raw blank on Harry Carey Rock. I need scissors. 61. Snake! Snake! Hi, this is Biz Marigold from World of Liberty, and you're listening to The Codec. Hi, Voltec calling. You're watching The Codec. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to Codec episode 27. We are joined by Chris Zimmerman Salter. Yep. Hi. How, how are you doing today? Good. How are you guys? We're great. great. Thank you for asking. And, wait, is that? I think I think I hear my Codec. <laughs> Campbell? Campbell, is that you? That's me. <laughs> That's me, Salter. <laughs> and, and Paul Eiding, how are you doing today, sir? I be good. All is well. You can't complain. Awesome. We're super excited to talk to you guys today uh, about what we have going on. We're joined by my co-host, Yong. Yeah? What's up, everybody? It's Yong here, and welcome to another episode of The Codec. We are joined by two amazing guests. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. I mean, Metal Gear is such a... Uh, it's, it's one of my favorite series of all time, and uh, I've always wanted to talk to you, Chris, and get your insight and what goes on behind the scenes. So really glad to have you here. And Paul, happy to have you back again. Happy to be here. <laughs> Chris, I can't begin to tell you how many stories uh, we've heard. This show that we do here mainly talks to voice actors, and I can't tell you how many times a voice actor has come in here and been like, yeah, uh, I really got to thank you know, Chris Zimmerman for everything that she's done. And we're like, you worked with her too? You've worked with like so many different, like oh actors gosh. who would never assume have worked with you, have worked with you. So we're excited to talk to you about um, everything that you have uh, to talk to us about. So can we start out by, by telling everybody just uh, who you are and how you kind of got into um, the voiceover industry? Um, as they've said, my name's Chris Zimmerman Salter and I am a voiceover casting director and director for animation and more specifically for video games. Hmm. And how, how, yeah, how did you get into it? Uh, it's kind of a long story, but I'll do the abridged version. Oh, right. it's, uh, I was an intern at the Amund Theater in college, a theater here in Los Angeles, and they couldn't afford to employ me. So I ended up um, getting a job with Gordon Hunt at Hanna-Barbera Studios. He was the voice director at the time there. And uh, through the next several years, I went from typing the scripts of the Smurfs <laughs> to being the casting director. And then eventually, one day he called me up and said, uh, I've got pneumonia, you'll be fine. <laughs> and that's how I got to direct my first episode. It was a show called oh, Capital wow. Critters. Wow. Starring Neil Patrick Harris. What? Oh, cool. Yep. yep. And I had all these celebrities in front of me, and and uh, I was very, very nervous. And I had my storyboard, and I said, okay, let's do this section here. Take one. And they did it. And I said, okay. Um, the rest is history. <laughs> I, I think I need a little more of this, a little more of that. You know, on this line, you should act like this. And, mm -hmm. um, and then they did it. And then the rest is history. <laughs> <laughs> Amazing. Guys, I do have a parrot. If she makes too much noise, that's, I will. Oh, make so that's what that practice. was. I was looking around like <laughs> I thought that was Paul. <laughs> Actually, that, that was me. Uh, yeah, I, I, that was my <laughs> parrot <I> sound. <laughs> <laughs> um, I, I didn't realize that was your first. I was. I was. I played um, um, uh, the dad in Capital Critters. Yeah, uh, uh, Neil Patrick Harris's dad. That's I didn't know Capital Critters was your first one. It well, was that's... my first episode. I'd done some pickup lines before that, but that was literally Gordon Hunt called me late one afternoon and said, I have pneumonia, you'll be fine. <laughs> that was it. <laughs> well, I think that answers uh, my next my next question, or maybe, maybe it doesn't. We'll know uh, here in a second. Is how, how did you first meet Paul? I met Paul... <laughs> oh boy. She gives an evil laugh. <laughs> I first met Paul at a, a mutual friend's uh, party. It was, I don't know, remember if it was a birthday party or an engagement party, but they'd rented a space probably behind a theater. There was a bunch of tables and, and snacks and stuff. And 
they brought me over and they said, oh, you guys should meet. This is Paul Eiding, Chris Zimmerman. And Paul stuck out his hand to take mine, to shake hands. And uh, instead of shaking my hand, he licked it. What? <laughs> <laughs> Look at Paul. <laughs> and I looked at him and I said, you're my friend forever. <laughs> and we've been friends forever. So Wow. You knew All that right. would come back to haunt you one day, didn't you? I knew it. I knew it. <laughs> well, wow. I don't do that anymore. Uh, <laughs> Interesting Now gesture. it would just seem really, really weird. Wait, so why? <laughs> what made you weird. lick her hand? Well, what was your thought process for that? I... I thought it would be funny. <laughs> <laughs> and, and it was. Uh, it, it was. Standing right there. <laughs> I mean, the whole thing about, for me, uh, the, the thing about comedy is it's surprise. That's true. That's, you know, doing what's unexpected is when, uh, Young, I know you're doing a show later. When I'm on stage, when I can do something on stage that surprises me or someone else surprises me, I love those moments. Mm -hmm. And that's why it was just, it uh, wasn't expected. It's, uh, mm. yeah. That's great. You know, maybe that's I'll try that one and I'll let you know how that goes. <laughs> oh, good. It's going to go one of, it's going one of two ways. He's a lot at the time. Too. Okay. All right. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. Well, that's an interesting <laughs> story, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. We were talking about that before you came on the show. We'll hop into that topic a little later. But, uh, y'all, you have the next question for these amazing people. Yeah, so uh, this question's for you, Chris. What drew you to Hideo Kojima's work, and how did this uh, long-standing r relationship begin? And uh, it, it, yeah, go ahead and answer that first, actually. Well, it was it, it was a happy accident. Hmm. Um, I was invited to go to an interview for a new game. I don't remember if they used the real name of it or they just gave me the initials MGS. Mm -hmm. I knew nothing about it. I did not play the the game without voices. I did not know Mr. Kojima. Um, and I did the interview, and happily I was the director that they chose to do it. Mm -hmm. And did uh, when, when Paul auditioned, uh, at, at, how was that? Like, do you guys, uh, I mean, <laughs> did, you, uh, did you know him prior to, like the, the whole licking yeah. the hand thing happened before the Metal Gear Solid? Way better. Okay. Years before. Okay. okay. Years before. So you already knew uh, him. And, mm -hmm. Yeah. What happened with the auditions for the first Metal Gear was I was hired to direct uh, MGS1 or Solid. And the, um, the production team had hired a casting director who was used to doing commercials um, in Torrance, California. Uh, I grew up in Torrance. It's not a big VO community or a huge acting community. And I thought, okay... I'll do that, but I'll direct it, and I'd just like to give you guys about 20 names mm -hmm. of people that I'd like to come in and, and, and be part of this audition process. And in the end, 19 of the people that I brought in were hired. Only one person, there was 20 people hired, and only one was from um, their casting. That was a person? Okay. Yeah. Wow. Very yeah. cool. We've heard a lot of stories <laughs> that... Uh, <laughs> We've heard tons of stories about them actually leaving the audition and you saying, why don't you come back and try a different character? Paul told us that that was, uh, that was the case with him and um, Chris, uh, Ran Christopher Randolph said that was the case with him. And uh, we've, we've just heard that throughout the, the different uh, actors that we've interviewed. And so my question for you on, on top of Yong's here is how do, you, how do you kind of like judge who should be what character? What did you come back for, Paul? I don't know. I don't remember time? that. It may have been a different, um, um, a different project. I, that's happened with different other uh, other animation where mm -hmm. I'd audition for something and then you know come back and do a different uh, uh, voice. But I don't remember that w with me. With uh, okay. if I said that to you, I lied. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, uh, it was there, during our first it interview. It might have been a different project, though, like you said. But yeah, I, I, thought it was, I thought it was Metal Gear. Yeah, it, yeah. it could very well have been that I had handed him a piece of copy, and then as he was in the booth, and I'm looking through the stack of the 20 characters, I thought, okay. oh, he should read this as well. Mm -hmm. And I would probably hand it to that him. That happens. Right then. Yeah. Yeah, that, that, I, I would bet that that's what happened. Yeah. But, but in general, I get, I get the stack of characters that I know little about. Uh, fortunately for Metal Gear, I had drawings. 
oh. of the characters. I had brief uh, descriptions of what they were looking for and who they were, mm -hmm. um, maybe a sentence or two, and that was about it. And um, with the drawing of Campbell and Paul's just amazing <laughs> pipes, uh, it, it just was a match made in heaven there. Okay. Yeah, I think uh, I, for sure I know Christopher Randolph told us that he came in and tried the audition for Snake, and when he was leaving, he told us that he told him, why don't you come back yeah. and try another, you know, this other character? And uh, yeah. obviously that worked one out great. Worked, out, yeah. worked out as well, too. <laughs> he, is, uh, he is my Otacon. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. He did such a great job in this, uh, this newer game as well. Now, but I've got to ask, uh, what was your thought process for uh, David Hayter? Because uh, yeah. from what he told us, his audition voice was completely different from what, what he ended up doing once he got in the studio. To be perfectly honest, he would remember that more than I would. Okay. Uh, as far as a voice morphing from audition to to first record, that happens a, a lot. Mm -hmm. um, you end up knowing more about the character. Um, I don't remember if he added gravel or took it away uh, when we ended up doing the first version of Snake. But the funniest thing about David was, um, like I said, I had the drawing of the character. David had not seen the sides ahead of time. No one had. And he showed up in a white T-shirt khakis and a bandana oh no <laughs> way <laughs> that's so, i can't believe you didn't and, tell us that and he had a mullet oh my god yeah, <laughs> yeah no david hater in his youth it. looked uh, ever, ever saw yeah. the drawing he did not do it on purpose that's just what he wore that day i think everybody kind of wow. resembles their character loosely uh, Y'all, since we're a little short on time for you, buddy, why don't you go ahead and take another question? Uh, yeah, um, so going off on uh, your work with Hideo Kojima, God knows what's happening with him over there at Konami. We just know that he's moving on to something else. Do you yeah. think you'll be working with him in the future, whatever ventures he may have uh, coming I, forward? I sure hope so. Okay. I sure hope so. Great. Um, uh, Daily, go ahead and take the next question. Okay, thank you. Um, so... Chris and Paul, this is, I guess, kind of a, a combined question for, for both of you. Um, when you did your first, you know, works on, on Metal Gear Solid 1, um, you guys did, obviously, a great job. That's a, a well-received and loved game. Uh, how was it moving from a game like that to the more, like, visually enhanced, um, you know, better story in Metal Gear Solid 2, where now you have, you know, different things to think about because now you have actual, like, facial... Um, features for the characters and things like that. Did it change the kind of recording process uh, for you guys now that the kind of technology had leapt forward so much in the time between the two games? Paul, you go. Uh, <clears throat> excuse me. Uh, not for me. No? Uh, I, uh, no. Um, there was a, a, a little different um, work in the voice, uh, but not majorly so. And... Uh, I didn't. I didn't like to think about that sort of thing. I, I wanted to make sure that the character was coming from from me, right. from the character, um, not from an image or anything like that. Okay. Uh, now, except for when <laughs> when things start going uh, kind of wacko. Yeah. <laughs> uh, <laughs> now, Chris. Now, this is what I remember, and, th and I've said this, and let me know. Let me know if this is apocryphal or not. I remember. <laughs> doing everything, and when everything was done, at the end of the day, you're giving me that sh a sheet with all the all those crazy things on it. And I said, well, yeah. what, does it, what does it mean? And you said... And I said, I don't know. <laughs> just, just do it. It'll did come you, clear Did later. you know? Uh, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> it's been so long. We can talk about it. It's supposed to be like his brain breaking down mm -hmm. okay yeah but no you have to consider that the scripts that i'm given are the english version and there's a lot of more detail written out in japanese mm -hmm. that i can't read <laughs> and i'm not privy to and we have to move pretty quickly yeah. okay uh, yeah. so a lot of it is gut instinct i would hear a word or two as far as the tone or what they needed um, but a, a, a major description of how he was breaking down, I was not given that. Okay. 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 Would you um, ever use maybe... So just do it as a good direction, I think. <laughs> Would you ever use maybe some of the recordings they did in Japan and then use that to gauge what you need for the English version at all? 
Not really. Um, what we had was we had a we had picture, and we might have had the dialogue. I don't really remember, but the cultures are so different. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That um, and it, it we had a certain length of time that we had to record things in. Sometimes we would actually have the animation. And we would watch the animation, but I don't really remember ever listening to the Japanese tracks. Do you, Paul? No, uh, except for uh, n- no, didn't listen to the tracks in four. Um, I remember we had uh, there was um, the mocap. We, we had to watch a little bit of the mocap uh, to watch how the body moves, how the where the head goes when when Campbell was talking, and how to you know how, how much energy he had, that sort of thing. Uh, okay. I do remember that, but that was it. Okay. Yeah, as far as the mocap goes, the mocap is uh, usually done before the voice recordings for any project. Uh, and in our instance, sometimes it was done in Japanese with right. the with the actual actors who play those characters. Sometimes it was done in Japan with people who spoke English mm-hmm. playing the roles. Um, and again, like Paul said, that's mainly for a a visual idea of how the actor moves, of if they turn their head, if they notice something, Mm -hmm. if obviously they're emphatic and yelling or whatever it is. But as far as performance goes, we always tried to keep it Mm -hmm. true to to this side of the pond and true to the characters, (laughs) the the English version of the characters, which are close, but they're not the same. Sure. They're not exactly the same. I do agree with that, yeah. Young, you have the uh, next question. Buddy. Yes. Uh, so this one's for you, Chris. Uh, could you give us a bit of an insight, uh, insight into how you do what you do? How do you go about helping and directing voice actors? What are some techniques that you use? And what do you say to them to help them get to where they need to get? Faster, funnier, louder. <laughs> <laughs> Faster, funnier, louder. Like it. Like old animation joke. It's not quite that simple. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how to describe what I do. Okay. Um, I, I, I have the script. I have the dialogue between the characters. Uh, I like to make sure that in my head I can hear a conversation if they're not in the room together at the same time. Mm-hmm. Uh, Metal Gear, we were very fortunate in that David almost always recorded with the people in the scenes with him. Mm-hmm. That was unheard of before Metal right. Gear. Mm-hmm. And that was one of the things that I had asked for. Of course. It's um, kind of unheard of nowadays. We've talked to a lot of voice actors who don't get that chance to kind of voice over with other people in the yeah. room, but you guys have seemed to, I think even in three, they said that they had them. some, oh, all of them. Yeah. All of there them. There you go. All of them. Um, I can't tell you if Kiefer ever recorded with anyone else, but that was only because uh, we were limited with his time. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, not me, not in the other reason. <laughs> and, um, uh, but other actors, if they were in scenes together, they came in together. Okay. We just try to coordinate that way. And I've done several projects. Um, mm-hmm. I know that uh, Ryan Payton, who was uh, the English producer, basically, of Metal Gear 4, uh, is now at Camouflage Games, mm-hmm. and uh, his own company, and I do a show with him, and we have the actors together as often as as, oh, cool. as we Very can. Cool. Mm-hmm. It's, it's cost prohibitive a little bit to do mm-hmm. that. It's more expensive, but um, I think you get better performances. I think yeah, so, too. I agree. Yeah, we uh, talk about that a lot here yeah. on the show. So it seems like a lot of it comes, I guess, just from instinct, from experience. It, just You just kind of know, yes. I guess. And if Paul, You hear it. You have a feel for it. Mm-hmm. You have a feel for what's right. I can certainly hear it if it's not right. Mm-hmm. Um, Jennifer Hale, who plays Naomi, as you know, I remember she was playing a different character for me, and she had a, p- a page of stuff to do. Mm-hmm. And I had a bunch of notes for her, and they were all contradictory. And I finally just looked at her, and I went, uh, uh, and she goes, okay, okay, okay. And she did it. She did every <laughs> single thing I asked for. And that's like my instinct feeding off of hers and hers feeding off of mine, and it was, it was quite fun. Huh, that's very interesting. Uh, Paul, from your end, uh, what uh, techniques do you see Chris use that maybe she's not aware of? Or what do you see uh, that she does that helps you uh, do a better job or to – get you in the right place well number one she doesn't over direct mm-hmm. uh, she, I, I think she's one of the smarter uh, directors out there because she if, once she's got you on the right path um, then she lets you let you play if you if you're straying or if you're not giving her what she wants she'll she finds a way 
with sometimes just a gesture. Um, it may be something like that. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I almost went like that to you. <laughs> you know, uh, but I mean, not, not to you, but that's what the character yeah. is mm-hmm. feeling. It may be a gesture. It may be one word. It may be three words where she may have to you know, expound on what's going on and all that stuff. Um, and she... You always feel comfortable. I'm, I'm not saying this just shining you on. Well, I don't have to because you know I love you. <laughs> you you uh, love me. <laughs> <coughs> that you always feel comfortable trying to be creative. Mm-hmm. Um, she's not like on top of you every second of the time where you think, oh my God, everything I'm doing is wrong. Because <coughs> generally you that. know. Mm-hmm. And I learned that from my mentor, Gordon Hunt. Oh, okay. There yeah. you go. He's an actor director, and I I try to be an actor director, mm-hmm. and to let I mean that's where the performances shine through. That's where Campbell shines through is yeah. is because he's given permission to become that character. Hmm. I see. I see. Otherwise, it becomes a game of mimicking. I think. Mm. Right. That's very that's true. true. Have you yeah. uh, done? Uh, I know you've been in like some works as some additional voices. I think in Metal Gear Solid Four, you did some voice work. Uh, is that something you've thought about? doing uh more i don't i i do it for fun okay uh i don't do it for um it's not what i pursue Uh, i am in ryan's game uh republic i am the Mm -hmm. data broker voice oh cool and the the one that the character comes to uh the player comes for information and they they like made it all scary and deep and gross and it's kind of awesome. So, <laughs> I had no that's idea that was you. I was I've been playing the game, so I think that's she, that's she, me. she doesn't do it, but she day. could do it. She could do it regularly. <laughs> oh wow, that's very cool. Um, yeah, I'll be very scary. Um, just the other day, I played a preschool teacher for uh, a friend of mine. Amber Hood has created a project called The World of Liberty, and it's an online book for for kids about learning uh u.s history and how it connects to history around the world and and different places around the world and uh i guess i'm not a preschool teacher i guess she's about 10 so i'm a i'm a little third grade teacher mm-hmm. uh in that particular project and i've done i've done a couple dozen mm-hmm. things i get killed a lot in in um resident evil <laughs> I like to scream, so I like it when, when people keep playing the character over and over so they could kill me. <laughs> as many times as I've killed them, right? <laughs> that's very well, that's, cool. That's awesome. I think uh, what, something that I've noticed uh, before Young hops into the next part of his question is you guys tend to kind of stick together where you go. I, I see a lot of projects where you've got Chris Zimmerman, David Hayter, Paul Eiding, uh, like you mentioned, Jennifer Hale. Uh, Not nearly and, enough with Paul Eiding, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, yeah, if right. I had my way, I would be in everything Chris does. <laughs> Fortunately, I don't get cast a lot of times. That's the business. Oh. Right. And, and the thing is, is that, hey, is that yeah. I, I try, I, as a casting director, I have a problem. I have to fill the roles. Yeah. Right. So I bring in the people that I know that can do the job, and I also bring in new people. Yeah. Right. So, true. so. Always, I will include a, a multitude of new people uh, in it, and a lot of times, the the tried and trues are the ones that get it. Right. Yeah, I've had a situation where Sony, I think it was, once told me, "We can't use this actor anymore. He's in all of our games. It's it just it's just we have to we have to not use this particular mm-hmm. actor." And it was not Paul. Okay. Um, and I also have to play. I don't. I shouldn't say a game. I have to be political in right. with my agents, and I have to give opportunities to their people so I can get things that I need down the road. Sure. And sure enough, the agent suggested that person, and I didn't want to flat out just say no. And mm-hmm. I thought, okay, it's a five minute audition. Bring him in. Mm-hmm. You know, five minutes of my time. Bring him in. Plus, he's very very talented. Mm-hmm. Well, push comes to shove. Guess who got the part? The Who's that's that? Yeah. The same actor that they told me not to oh. see. Okay. And his voice sounded completely different than anything he'd ever done, and it was it, it worked out. So do we can we know who that is, or is that no. a secret? Okay. Uh, it's not a secret. Okay. It's just not appropriate. Yeah. yeah sure. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah. Now, go ahead, y'all. One last part to the question is, uh, Chris, you've done uh, you've 
directed voice actors for both video games and cartoons and a lot of other things. So what would you say is sort of uh, the main difference between directing uh, voices for video games versus, say, cartoons? Uh, and Paul, you can chime in here too. With an animated animated show, we do the whole episode in four hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. So I've got all my actors. Uh, last week I had 11 actors in the same room. Sure. We start at the top. We do the scenes. We get it done. We're allowed four hours per the union payment. And with budgets and all that, you, you rarely, 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 rarely go over. Um, and it's it's a... Faster process when you're in the booth, but then it's another week or two weeks before you do the next episode. Okay. So it's a slower process in the overall. Run. Okay. Uh, then the game, mainly you do the bulk of it um, in two or three larger gaps. Okay. okay. You know, larger chunks of, mm -hmm. of time. Mm -hmm. um, and so it's more, um, you're more enmeshed in it during that time period. Okay. It's not like you do it, you let it go, you do it, you let it gotcha. go, you right. do it, you let it go. You're, you're in there for a longer period of time. Um, the actual process it, for me or for an actor, I believe, Paul, is pretty much similar. We're still acting out a scene. I'm still making my actors become the characters um, and matching with what the script needs are. Okay. So, but, yeah, so the, and it all process, depends on... Whether uh, the tone of the, the piece changes, you know, there are times when you're doing animation that's uh, a cartoon that's that's regular show or something like that. That's a little more, you know, a little more silly. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, over the top or whatever. Vincent, stuff like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> it's, it's still acting. Right. Great. Well, I've got a question for you, Chris. And if you can't talk about it, it's fine. But um, we've got a, a ton of fans here. Um, just a bunch live. Um, each of us have our own respective Metal Gear communities that love Metal Gear so much, and we would be uh, remiss not to at least ask you. So if you can't talk about it, it's fine. I've t I asked a couple people already <laughs> about it, and they couldn't talk about it, but uh, maybe you can explain why you can't talk about it. And I, I, maybe you guys know what's coming. But uh, in Metal Gear Solid 3, uh, a lot of people's favorite character was Eva. And it's credited to a person. <laughs> I'm not ever going to tell. Who is it real? Okay. Can you t can you at least explain to us why that that why that's under NDA or why that's closed off? Uh, it has nothing to do with Konami. Okay. Okay. It's a it's just like maybe a a, a, it was friend. a personal choice. It was a personal choice uh, by the actor who played the role. Okay. Okay. Perfect. All right. And that, she didn't love the role. She loved the role, but it was a personal choice for. Okay. Her to remain anonymous. Yeah. Uh, okay. okay. Interesting. S since you since you mentioned Eva, um, uh, there's someone, uh, a Facebook friend and a Twitter follower, who asked me to uh, her her tw right. Twitter name is Eva, and she asked me to do something. So I would like to do that right now because yeah. you mentioned her. Let's cool. do it. Um, it. Simply is this: um, cursory evaluation of Decepticon capability indicates a distinct tactical deficiency. There. <laughs> she, she, oh, wanted, she, she remembered. Um, the lady she wanted Perceptor to say something. <laughs> <laughs> the actual lady who played Eva, um, her name is Suzette Mimou. Right. Yes. Yeah, so we... No, that's her name. That is her name. Suz Suzette Mimou. It's, it's an anagram, I'm sure. So, <laughs> well, that was uh, a credit name. Uh, right, okay. <laughs> I think um, I, I think as far as that goes, people love that. There, there's different theories all around. We actually had um, uh, wow, how could I ever forget her name? Uh, Meryl, um, her, Debbie, yes. Debbie West, yeah. And she literally thought it was her. Like she's like, I might have done that and just forgot about it. <laughs> she was. Uh, like, it was me. I'm there. there. <laughs> <laughs> Secrets revealed. Uh, that, was, that was my real voice. I see. <laughs> okay. <laughs> this whole time you've been using your fake. Okay. You've been acting yeah, this whole time. Yeah. It's been all around the net. Like people, people, some people think it was the the lady who did the Little Mermaid, and that's what uh, I'm all, thinking too. All sorts of different um, voice yeah. characters. Oh, out there. So, I think, so sad. So sad. <laughs> I think. Uh, Dang it, Chris. Uh, <laughs> do you think at any point in time, uh, over the length of whoever this is his career, that they will tell us? who that is it's a really important role i really role. don't know i really don't know mm -hmm. okay. um if she would change her mind ever 
Okay. Well, maybe when she's like eighty or something, she might fess up. <laughs> <laughs> she well, did we'll such be... a great job. Uh, whoever yeah. you are, she did a phenomenal yeah. job. Yeah, Make sure you give job. her our thanks and, and our love. And if she ever wants to to come on the show, we'll just do a blank screen. Yes, is that? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll just do a blank screen and uh, we'll do it like that. But yeah, I had to ask. Um, of course. So. Uh, can you tell us then a little bit about how it was working with whoever this person was? Was it different kind of getting a new person acclimated with the series um, and kind of having them drop into a role like that? That's going to no, because it's, it's, it's just the same as any other actor being given a character and bringing that character to life. If the character is new to the scene and the actor is new to the scene, you know, she knew the world, you know, we told her about the world. We told her cool. about Snake. You know, she did all her scenes with David, cool. uh, as far as I remember. He wouldn't and tell either. <laughs> no, he won't. He won't. <laughs> her secret is safe. Oh, um, and she's not even paying us off. <laughs> <laughs> we asked We asked Jim Piddock as well, and he couldn't remember. <laughs> I don't. I don't know that he was ever in the scenes with her. Right, okay. Mm -hmm. he, might, he might not have been. Yeah, they we didn't have a lot of interaction. Eva and, and Zero never really interacted much. In right, well, I, I think uh, as most of us, in, in, me included, I just assumed since they had most of the people there that he might have ran into her at least, you know, once or twice through the studio. So I, we asked him. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Now, now that I know that it's by request, we will stop prying. For now. <laughs> For now. Yeah. yeah. I was going to say, no, you, you won't. You're not going to stop. Yeah, <laughs> fans love You're going to look guys. for the hole, they're going to crack it. <laughs> <laughs> the Metal Gear fans understand that kind of stuff, I think. Uh, yeah. It adds like, you know, an enigma to the character as well. But maybe yeah. if you know yeah. who she is, maybe you can pass it along yeah. that the fans want her. They, they want to know who she it won't is. Change. It won't change. Uh, you don't think so? Okay. Well, I, know, I, know it, yeah. I know it won't change. <laughs> Young, you have the next question, bud. Yeah, so this one is for you, Paul. Uh, let's briefly touch upon Fallout 4. I am very much looking yes. forward to this game. And as soon as you spoke, I knew it was you uh, during uh, the E3 conference. So tell us a bit about this character. He seems to be a salesman from vault Tech. He wants to sell... Uh, vaults uh, and uh, you have this very like high range kind of voice uh, it's very funny stuff is uh, will we see more of him or is that bit all we will see of that particular character can you say uh, here's what I've been told that I can say okay uh, originally they said no you can't talk about it you can't talk about it then of course they, they show it at E3 yeah. <laughs> yeah. and it's anybody anybody who knows me knows that that my I, I do that thing up there right. they know that it's me right. um, <laughs> So I Which is half of Los Angeles. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, so I, I did some pickups and I said, guys, you, you got to help me out here. I feel I'm just lying to people. But, but I'm just saying I can't say, can't confirm nor deny. Okay. And finally, this is what I was told I can say. Okay. I can say, yes, that's me. I'm in the game and I had a great time working on it. <laughs> so you, awesome. can't, you can't tell us if you are playing additional roles Rolls. like if you're more than just one yeah. okay <laughs> <sighs> uh, well at least you're in the but game but I, I, I tell you right now I had a great time working on the game okay I feel like that means you were there yeah. for quite a bit and my <laughs> theory is that you will play maybe one, one session and you one had a great game. time yeah right okay <laughs> mm. well I mean they, they could do a lot in one session we've heard you know Paul told us the story about how he flew up uh, to do a Diablo um, reading and did a, a whole the whole thing in one day and yeah. uh, just just nailed it. And I guess uh, you said it was. Did you say it was one take as well? A whole drum. Yeah, right. almost all of it was one take, which I wasn't happy with. But they they were happy with. It. There were a couple of little pickups, but most of it was done in one right. one go, because I had to be up there and yep. I was doing a show at the time. I had to go up, fly up there, do it, and fly back from um, uh, Vancouver. Was uh, this all of one day? Was this before you could do like your recordings at home or or whatnot? Oh yeah, this was this was. I, I always forget which came first, Metal Gear or Diablo. They're both like ninety seven, ninety eight. Yeah, they're both pretty. Metal Gear I, came out in ninety eight. Yeah. 10, yeah. One ninety eight. I think Diablo might have been uh, by, the, the original uh, Diablo one we're talking about, right? Yeah, nineteen ninety six. So okay. that's so you before. You can record at home when Metal Gear came out. So right. 
We yes. heard about the studio, the, or the little house. Right, the yeah. house, the so shabby. How, was like, house. Yeah. how did you, how did they choose that <laughs> fabulous <laughs> first studio? <laughs> they chose that phenomenal studio because that's where their production offices were. Remember they had two buildings? Right. There was right. the house and then there was the back building and then part of the other house, it was offices. And the <laughs> living room area was actually their screening room. <laughs> And we were all in the same room. Uh, we had tables on one side of the room, a uh, television set for the ADR setup uh, facing both of us in the middle of the room, and then the actors on the far side. And I tell you, anytime a, a car stopped at yep. the stoplight, anytime anybody sees <laughs> motorcycles, a dog barking, ruined, ruined takes after take after take. Right, so right. when they came back to me uh, about a year and a half, two years later, and said that they wanted to make uh, the next Metal Gear, right. um, I said, okay, great, but some things are going to change. <laughs> yeah, I think uh, David told us a story about um, them, like you guys doing a, an important piece of Metal Gear 1, uh, Metal Gear Solid 1, and uh, a garbage truck rolling by. <laughs> And, it was uh, true. and <laughs> I, I remember that story from I think it was our first interview with him, and uh, it was it was such a funny story because we all assumed you guys were in you know a nice little studio somewhere up in up in the hills. <laughs> Not, yeah, they had know, never done uh, a game before. This was a production company that mainly, I believe, did mm -hmm. commercials. Oh, okay. And they had never done voiceover before. They'd never done a game. They didn't know how. Yeah, and I mean, back, I back then, just voiceovers were just not very, like, professional, yeah. like, high-grade voiceovers were voice just not very common. For games. Yeah, voiceovers for yeah, games, for games, for games yeah. right. They were mostly, uh, from what we know, they were mostly people in-house in the studio would record, you know, voices, like, Resident Evil was a good... Mm -hmm. uh, a oh, good, yeah, good they all had their uh, uh, actors from, from their own offices. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, I've replaced a lot of you guys. <laughs> <laughs> Oh boy! <laughs> but uh, uh, Metal it. Gear, I believe, was one of the first that really, really um, rose the bar yep. as far yep. as uh, voiceover in games. Mm -hmm. I think so. Had, I think had gone. Yeah, from what I've heard, I think, um, I think it's still up there. Yeah, yeah. I, from what I've heard, uh, back then uh, they basically hired people who are used to, who just have a good voice, basically, who did commercials, but don't necessarily have the acting quite down. So we get stuff like Resident Evil 1, where uh, the acting was kind of uh, iffy. Um, a Jill so sandwich. Speak. Yeah, the Jill sandwich <laughs> stuff. Um, so, yeah. I just did, uh, I just did the, the last Resident Evil Revelations mm -hmm. 2. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. And I think we put a Jill sandwich in there just you for did. Yes, you did. It was, great. Yeah, <laughs> it was that's, awesome. That's <laughs> I remember uh, our co-host who's not here today, Ronan, uh, when we were playing it, he was playing it on uh, on a stream, and when that line came up, he just set his controller down and just started laughing. It was uh, <laughs> a, a nice little nod to the uh, to the original stuff, but uh, y'all are here. No much. <laughs> they, they have fun. And yeah, I'm, I'm Gina in that game, so you can yep. kill me, and <laughs> I'm also the newscaster at the end. Huh. Wow, didn't know that. Something else. I don't remember what else, but yeah, I got to scream a lot. It was awesome. <laughs> <laughs> That's always good. Um, Young, since I know you've only got a few minutes left here with us, buddy, do you want to just hop into some of your uh, okay. questions? I know you've got some Metal Gear Solid 5 questions. I know you want to sure. get some community questions in there. Um, yeah. Usually our interviews run about an hour uh, or so, so um, Young has a play to go to as well. So we're gonna, I'm going to let him kind of ask oh, great. questions, and if he has to leave at the end, then I'll take over um, sure. after it's all finished. Great. So, uh, Chris, um, what has been uh, your favorite Metal Gear to voice direct, and why? And for Paul, which uh, Metal Gear game has been your favorite uh, to voice uh, for for Campbell? That's like choosing between your children. <laughs> <laughs> we hear that a lot. <laughs> I I think it was four, mm -hmm. and I think that the reason is because we. The whole group of us, um, myself and the actors and and even the sound guy that still worked on it and some of the other people that still worked on it on, in Konami's uh, Kojima Productions end, um, we thought it was our last one. 
Oh, right. We were told it was the last one. And uh, I specifically remember a scene where Meryl, and we finally find out that Campbell's Meryl's father Mm -hmm. at her wedding. Right. And the Ryan Payton, who was the um, producer from Kojima Productions on my end, um, he was keeping a tally of how many times Chris cried. Oh, yeah. From emotional scene, you know, like from Snake sticking the gun in his mouth mm. and Otacon basically telling Sonny that he's gone. Well, my biggest moment was the scene with, with Meryl and and Campbell, and she's getting married, and there's that emotional scene between them. And if I may, Paul, um, tell a little personal thing. His daughter was leaving for college the next day. Oh. And... Oh my God! <laughs> the tears in his eyes, the tears in my eyes, and I've known I've known Paul's children since they were uh, one of them before she was born, and the other one since she was one years old. So um, it, it just just, mm-hmm. but it was it was more than a personal moment. It was just that that there was so many wonderful moments in that project, wonderful emotional moments mm-hmm. from my point of view. Uh, yeah, for me as a gamer, uh, as a Metal Gear fan, uh, it was just amazing to see these characters just push to the limit and have all these emotional moments. And the reconciliation between Campbell and Meryl was, I thought, really awesome. And uh, yeah, 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 I got chills right now. It was my second second favorite in the series. Um, I love that man. It's hit yeah. home, hit home. Yeah. And Paul, how about you? Which uh, I guess Colonel Campbell did you enjoy playing most? Oh, ditto uh, with four because four was. Uh, you get a chance to really see uh, something that I'm not used to, wasn't used to in video games, mm-hmm. you know, that kind of emotion. Um, look, the plus the first. Well, I, I love this. I love two. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love two because, you know, you get to, you know, do all that weird crap. And <laughs> I can't tell you how many stories I ever heard of um, of people saying that they play the game for six, eight hours straight and two o'clock in the morning, they're alone in their room. And I tell them to turn off. The, they've been playing the game yeah. too long. Turn it off. Now you know, and it freaked them out. It's like, I love that kind of stuff. You know, <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, one, because it started it all, yeah. you know? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, That's my favorite. That's in fact, I, w- I was just, I just went back recently um, I was with a friend and he said, oh, man, you got to watch some of these old cutscenes." And there was stuff that had happened so long ago that I couldn't remember. And I, I may have mentioned this to Chris before. There, there are times when you do a character um, and you've had time away from that character for a, long, uh, for, for, for a period of time. And you go back and you watch the scene and you forget that it's you. <laughs> yeah. Does that make sense? <laughs> yeah. It, and that's the magic of the writing and, and uh, the... Uh, Your acting. Uh, the, <laughs> well, the, that, but, but the, um, the magic of the piece, mm-hmm. when mm-hmm. it all comes together, yeah. The, yeah. Um, the CGI and the animation right. and the everything else, and, yeah. and the music, oh my God, the music, mm-hmm. uh, yeah. it just takes you away. And that's when you realize what we're doing is really... What we, not not me, what we are doing is special when you have something like that. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, I recently I went on Twitter thank, and I thanked uh, Kojima for allowing me to be part of this, uh, a small part of the game. And people kept saying, no, you weren't a small part, blah, 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 blah. <laughs> uh-huh, I said it, sir. <laughs> but, and I, God knows I appreciate that. But when I was saying that, and I just went on a little while ago and said it wasn't false modesty. Um, yeah. We are. There are hundreds and hundreds of people who create these, right? You know, well, all the all the people who don't get any credit. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Right. I think uh, definitely lots of people deserve credit for these games. But I tell this to all of the voice actors. Um, you know, I, I think obviously, like you said, you want to spread credit around. But uh, I tell this, like I said, to everybody. If Chris wouldn't have picked you for the the role of Campbell, I can almost guarantee you who somebody else wouldn't have had the same impact as you have had on you know people's lives. There's people uh, in the Metal Gear community who will straight up tell you that Metal Gear has changed their life. That you know it gets wow. them you know different viewpoints on things and it teaches them you know 
um, certain aspects of of life and, and how to kind of you know mature and how to handle situations. But if you pick the wrong voice actors for that, Chris, it, it could. I mean, I'm sure you've been in you know the industry and seeing games where you know the voice director picks voice actors who maybe don't fit or it doesn't you know turn out so well. Those games don't have any impact on people, and people could care less about you know games that um, you know they just play once or twice and then throw away. I've played Metal Gear at least every year since it came out. Oh, and, that's uh, awesome. <laughs> that is awesome. Yeah, so I, it's definitely important who you pick for these roles. And like you said, Paul, it's definitely important to give you know everybody some credit. But I think people give you guys the most credit because you bring what's essentially you know st- stuff on paper to life. So hopefully that, that can kind of clear up why people are so like behind you guys on, on this kind oh, of thing. God, oh, no, God knows I appreciate it. And, <laughs> and also... Uh, not to shine her on anymore, but uh, without the direction. Right. That's what we say. She picks the best. Yeah. Someone leading you the right way. I've done projects where I thought we're going to be fabulous, but when I hear them, it's like, ew. <laughs> ew. That's me overacting. Oh, yikes. God. I, I think we talked about one of them a long time ago when, when I was on before. It's like, wow. Okay. All right, that yeah, I've got to own up. It, it, it's my voice is out there. Right. That's me doing that. Anyway, yeah, that's what you want, right? <laughs> I used to tease uh, uh, some of my producers, Ryan included. Um, if you know, ultimately, it's their game. Ultimately, I'm hired to give them what they are looking for. Uh, I'm fortunate that that most of the time. Uh, they listen to my guidance, or if they have suggestions, it's for the betterment of the project. But once in a while, Ryan and I would, he'd have something that he'd want that I thought was silly or whatever, and I would just look at him and go, oh, it's your game. <laughs> <laughs> right, I guess I bet you that gives some thinking, too, because you, you guys have had so many great titles. But, Yon, um, want to hop into your next question, bud? Yeah, sure. Uh this is uh, a question for you, Paul, just to be sure. You were nowhere near Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. No uncredited voices, additional voices, one soldier, that one guy I might have killed. None of that. You no, I, I can look directly at Chris Sal- Zimmerman Salter and say, no. <laughs> and I can look directly at Paul Arding and say, mm-hmm. sorry, dude. Gotcha. <laughs> did you, yeah, um, no. did Maybe you ever... Actually, to clear all that up... Mm-hmm. Um, the game took place before Campbell was introduced to the Metal Gear world. That's true. Yeah, that's so, what that's what we all no, assumed. And there wasn't any real other characters. I, Paul, I, I have more than one voice, you know. Paul, Paul doesn't, Paul doesn't <laughs> speak. Thank Paul you, Paul. boss. <laughs> <laughs> How about Kakongo? It took me two years to find those guys. Oh, boy. Did it really? You wow. could have had old Mother Base folks who could have, you know, you know. That, that's, there weren't any stuff. That one soldier walking back in my day. Metal <laughs> Gear yeah, wasn't this fancy. <laughs> Maybe it would have been funny, style. but they didn't do that. <laughs> Maybe Baltech was looking for Big Boss. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Maybe Boss like peed himself in the in his cubby <laughs> and got hauled away and was nicknamed Johnny Sasaki. <laughs> oh boy. <laughs> <laughs> you guys didn't know where I was going with that, did you? <laughs> the theories. <laughs> the theories. Y'all so, continue, continue. Yeah, so, so Chris, you, you never, uh, you never like, approached uh, Paul Lighting. You never thought, of oh, maybe this one character, nah, maybe. It, 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 it no, I okay. couldn't. Gotcha. No, yeah, that's fine. Um, and uh, I guess. Uh, no, this you is... should be my manager, man. <laughs> <laughs> I want you to call all the different directors I've worked with and mention that to them. Yeah. <laughs> Do not think about Paul for this. Do not think about Paul. Jeez. I always think about Paul. That's a hashtag. Also, there we go. Paul hashtag is definitely Paul. on my short list. <laughs> <laughs> now, for both of you, have you. Uh, played uh, Phantom Pain at all? What do you think about, I guess, uh, the voice work uh, that's been done there? Obviously, um, go I finished the game in like two hours, Paul. How about you? you- <laughs> in two hours? Yeah. I'm wow. not in it. I'm not playing it. <laughs> <laughs> that's a very David Hare like, answer. Yeah. Hey, for who? Not- <laughs> you guys I do are- not know how to play video games. Uh, I gotcha. Goodness. Well, I'm sure you you probably know the story just as good as anybody who's played the games, considering you 
you know. Dur- yes, however, uh, I'm given things. Uh, the only Metal Gear I ever saw the entire script at once was Metal Gear 1. Oh, okay. And then after that, I get it in the chunks that we're going to be recording for those two to three week mm-hmm. periods of time. Okay. Okay. Again, most of the direction is in Japanese. Right. And <laughs> it's a, a process of discovery. Mm-hmm. And it's all out of order. Yes. Right. Awesome. For example, for those of you who have finished Metal Gear 5. Get everybody here. Yeah. Oh, but not not all your fans, not all the people that are listening. I, they hope so. If they're Metal Gear fans, better, better be done. But we did the last scene first. Really? Really? So <laughs> we, we did the last scene first. And so I was completely always confused <laughs> that that people didn't have that information because I had that information. Huh. And then finally, I don't even think that they told me that was the last scene. It was just a process of discovery. Okay. That, oh, this is all before that very last scene. And now <laughs> the whole thing makes sense. <laughs> there you go. Yeah. Metal gotcha. Gear out of order is uh wow. That's a monster within itself. Uh, even <laughs> oh, yeah. in order, it's still kind of, you can still kind of struggle to make sense out of uh, a lot of it because it's just so complex. Um, but, I remember one time in Metal Gear Four, they were talking about uh, you know the legacy and 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 all that, and uh, I was like, "Oh, now I get it." <laughs> Referring to Metal Gear One. Mm. Yeah, there's always that moment. Uh, like when I was younger, I had to research all this stuff just to make sure I had it down, and I always had these moments of epiphany where I'm like, "Oh, so that's how Kojima connected this one little thing to this giant thing that would." Uh, <laughs> come forward in a, in a future game. Right. He's genius as yeah. far as that goes. He's absolutely a genius. Mm-hmm. I agree with that. And whoever knew that Solanthropus was a real word. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that, that's a mouthful. It took me a while to get that one. All right, so going that's off on that. <laughs> Love it. Chris, let's uh, talk a bit about Kiefer Sutherland. Uh, when it was announced that he would be uh, playing Snake, there was definitely a bit of a backlash. People knew David Hayter... Uh, right. to be snake and so it was you know a lot of people were worried so uh, my question to you is how much did you influence that des- decision to recast snake and uh what was it like that, uh, i am a hired hand okay. um i present them with the people for the roles that they have me audition people for mm-hmm. uh i presented them with my 20 people almost 20 years ago mm-hmm. um i had nothing to do with the uh, process of of deciding which celebrity that they were going to use. That was all uh, Mr. Kojima's mm. um, okay. uh, desires. Those mm-hmm. were his his choices, mm-hmm. and yeah, it kind of broke my heart. Mm-hmm. You know, it it it, it, yeah. it did yeah. kind of break my heart not to be working with David, um, given the fact that you know I still had a job to do, and uh, I still had a character to maintain. I really think Kiefer did a great job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I uh, think so he, too. Was, he was delightful to work with. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, we were limited in his time as far as uh, his other commitments. Right. But when he was there, he was one hundred percent there. He loved. He loved it. Um, yeah, I think he we've he said that in in interviews before, yeah. and he was not only he's a really fine actor, mm-hmm. um, and and. He he did put his heart into it, and it wasn't like just he. It wasn't that he just did it and and didn't care about it. He cared about it a lot, yeah. and he really, hear. really, really wanted it to be good. And and I think we got that. Yeah, I actually, uh, I and remember. I, it still breaks my heart a little bit that it wasn't. Yeah, I, I know. Yeah, of yeah. course. Uh, same here. But I remember seeing him at the was it the VGAs where he came on stage and uh, sort yes. of talked to his fans, and I genuinely saw a man who was very excited about this project that he had worked in. It was, and it was so new to him too, uh, from what I gathered. Yes. Mm-hmm. We had to do, um, he had to do, I should say. Uh, we had the motion capture from Japan. Mm-hmm. Right. He had to memorize the length of the lines. Like I said before, he didn't have to do the line reads that the actor did and it was an it was an american actor in japan wasn't top notch um and uh so um not only because he's watching the picture of it he had to adr it he had to do the lines to picture and we were doing facial capture right 
So any motion that the guy that you're watching on the TV screen did, Kiefer had to do it opposite. Hmm. Because of the camera angle. Oh, oh, I see. Oh, wow. What you're watching isn't what the actor is doing. Holy, wow, that's a lot to keep in mind. So it was, the first session was a little bit dicey just because there was so much technical stuff involved. And then we had to follow him to Canada uh, where he was shooting a film and we went up there with him and we had at that point we had some footage mm-hmm. and when he saw that footage his eyes just lit up and so cool. he, he really was like wait, wait, wait what, what am I watching here this is amazing <laughs> so that's awesome yeah, he was great wow. to work yeah, with he, makes it, he made it look so natural considering all the things he had to keep in mind while all the technical aspects of things I think he played off the character very sort of naturally which is really neat yeah it was cool it was cool it was, a, it was nice yeah i can't wait to talk to him uh, hopefully we can get an interview with him scheduled sometimes uh, like you said he's very busy so his agent is always telling me call back in a couple weeks call back in a couple weeks yeah uh, it's it, it <laughs> it's he's, tough. he's a busy man yeah. he's a busy busy guy i've got a, a quick question before you move to the next one young um it, it should be very quick uh did you feel like um, the absence of, I guess, lines for Snake in this particular game uh, changed any of the, of the dynamics? So he doesn't talk very much. Uh, when he does talk, it's really kind of short and to the point. Did that concern you at all during your, you know? No, because right? the process that I had was a two-year process, and I didn't even realize that till people started saying something. Because hmm. <laughs> I didn't, uh, again, I don't ever have the whole thing right. in okay. front of me. You know, it's like, you know, we had meaty scenes with him. He had, he, you know, he had some really cool, intense scenes. Yes. But yes. Uh, as far as it did it concern me, no. But now a couple of friends of mine that are avid fans are like, you know, I kind of miss him talking to me. I kind of, miss, and I kind of went, oh, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Snake was just so, so, like, snarky. You know, like, big boss. He's always so, like, sarcastic and, like, he's he's a yeah. pretty wordy guy. <laughs> If it's a different hit, it's yeah. a different way of doing it. And again, that was Kojima's vision. Um, yeah, vision for this particular one. He wanted it to be a little more grounded. It. He wanted to get away from that uh, sure. a little bit of that tongue in cheek stuff that was <laughs> happening, which I so adored. Right. Yeah. I think everybody does. Okay, well, Young, since we're getting really, really close to your time, we'll be here, Mark. So go ahead and continue. Yep, so this question is for you, Paul, and Chris, you can chime in on this one, too. Something that I've been intrigued by as of late is this movement called Performance Matters. A bunch of voice actors are sort of hashtagging it and retweeting it. Uh, So uh, what can you tell us about this for the people who may not know? What is this movement, and where uh, did it start? Uh, it started uh, at the beginning of uh, when we first started doing video games. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> uh, it's, 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 it's simply... Um, if video games are important. Uh, voice, uh, voice acting is important in video games. Yes. I think we've yes, established sir. that. Very much. So. Uh, we bring the characters to life. And right now, video games is the only... I'm trying to make sure I'm not lying. Video games is the only uh, uh, sort uh, of thing. I, I, I might correct you before you start, before you say that. Uh, is it reuse that you're going to say? Yeah. Um, interactive interactive shows, for example, like Netflix shows and things oh, like that yeah. also do not have. Yeah, don't okay. get me started on that one. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, I was correcting you and saying this only. Yeah, thanks. Only. Video games, there, there's no... Uh, Actors live basically uh, off of um, residuals. You know, you, you work um, you you work on a movie, you work on a TV show, right? Uh, and uh, you get your session fee. And then, if the movie does well, if the TV show um, airs again and again and again, then the actors get a small piece of that. Right. They're called residuals. Mm-hmm. And video games has none of that. Um, people think that a lot of uh, video game actors are making tons of money. It, it's not the case. You you get your session fee generally, unless you're a big name, and then you you, you always have to bargain for your fee up front. Mm-hmm. And then it doesn't matter if it sells 41 million uh, copies of something. Or in Metal Gear Solid 5's case, with 176 
million yeah. first week, um, something like that. Yeah, the, and then then can be sold and resold and resold into perpetuity. Uh, nothing is ever not, the actor, the voice actors don't get any of that. Mm -hmm. Right now, that's why I think it's always important when I'm when I'm always saying that everybody deserves equity, meaning developers, people who work their butts off on these games. Yep. Everybody deserves um, something. Yeah. Um, performance matters simply means that we deserve to to share. Yeah, in the, the uh, in the profits, mm -hmm. and we're talk we're not talking about a lot of money. We're talking about a, another session fee or whatever. Once it gets sells a certain amount of uh, okay. of millions of copies or whatever, so that's what the whole performance matters thing is. If people value the voice actors, then they should uh, yeah. they should really value them. Not just saying, mm -hmm. "Oh yeah, we're really glad you're here." We should, mm -hmm. you know, right. share, share in the, a, a touch in the profits. And trust me, we're talking very small amounts of the profits. So that's that's basically what it is. Mm -hmm. okay. And the, the, the sad thing to me is what ends up happening is whoever it is decides to try and pit the, the creatives against one another, the, you know, the creative artists against the, the um, interpretive artists, sure. the voice actors against the people who, who build the games and make the games, or the writers. It and shouldn't be like that. No, we're all in it together. That's why I always say we're all in this together. Mm -hmm. it, it, whatever. And the people who are making the, the huge, huge profits, Universal or whoever mm -hmm. they are, mm -hmm. um, they, can, they can have a little less profit and share it with everybody. That's why... Right. Yeah, it's all about income sure. Uh, equality. Sure, you know? sure. It makes some sense. sort of balance. Yeah, uh, it it shocks me that video games don't have that, that because I mean, it's such a big industry. I mean, some of these games make more money than some of the big blockbuster movies out there and stuff. So yeah. it's kind of like shocking. Most of that. them do. <laughs> yeah, Universal yeah. is more in uh, off their video games than their films, mm -hmm. uh, all their other projects, and. City Walk and all the theme yeah. parks put together. Right. Wow. Right. So it's it's just uh, it's it's all about equity. It's like mm -hmm. that gotcha. makes sense. Uh, so it certainly isn't about you know greed. Yeah. No. On our part. It's about what's uh, fair. I think. But, but see what happens is people assume they hear you all the time, or they see you on television all the. Especially if they hear you all the time, they yes. think, "Wow, man, he must be really rolling in the dough." <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> Not the case. <laughs> all the time because they keep putting the same game in the machine. <laughs> exactly. Right. Exactly. And that's, that's, <laughs> that's a normal. That's a normal sort of feeling to have. Yeah. Uh, but what they don't see is the actor auditioning right. twenty times, thirty times, forty times before they get a gig, and they don't get another gig for you know sometimes two weeks, three weeks. They keep on. You're, you're still trying to get the jobs. Um. So it's it's as simple as that. Yeah, right. no, of course. I uh, think uh, Matt Mercer actually said something similar to that. You know, he said he's right now he's good, but before you know he was he would do a game and he didn't know when his next check would come and he would get kind of you know worried about you know that kind of stuff. And I think that's not something that I guess uh, video game fans and, and people who play games want you guys to feel. You know, we want to make sure because our money supports that, and we want to make yeah. sure that you guys are you know comfortable for the games that you that you produce. And it's not just a money thing as right. well. It's also about you know, uh, you know the the, the vocal stress, yeah, of course. yes, um, that, which is really important. Mm -hmm. And people like Chris take care of the actors. Yes, we've there's, heard that. There, there's several <laughs> yeah, we've several heard places. That quite a bit. They really do. They take care of you. Other ones they don't really it's think about. Because I it. say things like, "I'm going to sever your Achilles tendon with pruning shears." <laughs> In order to get a good scream out of you, you get that first scream pretty good. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's that sort of thing. Be and, careful, uh, that's okay. <laughs> um, so there are other other issues, uh, and then letting us know what what game we're working on, mm -hmm. and some of the things that 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 yeah. the other side is asking for, wanting to um, charge you guys for things. Charge if somebody if 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 in somebody's uh, feeling that, that you aren't totally attentive or if you get a phone call during a session they want to be able to, to find you two thousand no, two thousand or five five thousand dollars or whatever it is 
And also to sue your agent if your agent doesn't send you out for uh, voiceover extras work. What? Uh, yeah. Yeah. That's another thing. They want to be able to. What? I know. They, it's like. What does that mean? It's silly. It's what silly. what does that mean? It means that they're, they're demanding that agents send out everybody, if they ask for Paul Lighting or yep. David Hayter, to come in to do uh, voiceover extras, to just to do grunts and screams and stuff. And if the oh, agent no, for their own characters? Yeah. I, I, yeah, for their characters or whatever, you know? Mm -hmm. No, but if it's for your own character, it should be you. Of course it should be you. But I don't know if it's just if it's your own character or just you know just from, extra from, stuff from what well, I extra read. Characters, I yeah, would understand extra that being characters. That's, that's what I so, that's what I read was if they if they ping your agent um, for you to come out and do something, whether it be your own character or a separate character, they they could find you. That's it's kind of open to interpretation in that area. I've looked over some of the stuff that you know they've been saying on Twitter, and um, Quentin Flynn is actually a big advocate of it as well. And uh, so uh, when, when talking with him, he was kind of on the same page as you, Paul. He's kind of upset about some of the things that they're wanting to, you know, possibly charge him or his agent for. I think they're just throwing that stuff out there as, as you know, bargaining. It's, it's those bargaining chip sort of silly things. Mm -hmm. uh, but right now they, they, were, um, they asked for people to, to do, not, not to go on strike, but right. to give authorization for a strike. And I think the, the count was like 96% of all the actors said yes. Wow! If we have to do, nobody wants to do that. Like, right, I'm the, sure. The worst thing ever is to to go on strike. I've done it a couple of times with different unions, and no one wins. No one wins. <laughs> no, no one wins. ever wins. Mm -hmm. You know. Well, hopefully, uh, um, hopefully, you guys can come to some resolution because uh, I mean, voice actors are such a key part of these video games, especially nowadays where they're yes. so cinematic and so bombastic. Um, and, you know, these actors need to be compensated properly who do a lot of, uh, like, really hard work. Like, voice acting isn't easy. It's it's not a, a breeze to do. If, a good voice acting You're in particular. You're exhausted at the end of the day. I'm yeah. exhausted at the end of the day. <laughs> right, right. Mm. Yeah, see, but you know, unfortunately, a lot of people don't don't feel that way. They, mm -hmm. they don't they don't really get it. Yeah, right. They, they, they hear a game or they watch or they'll watch some of one of us on uh, something like this and say, oh, my God, that that's, seems so easy. Mm -hmm. I can do that. <laughs> <laughs> right. You guys I, yeah. are so good because you make it seem so easy. Yeah. Exactly. Right. <laughs> and that's the dilemma. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, um, Young, you can continue. Yeah. Gotta, uh, I know you're getting real All short right. on time. Uh, so this is I, I, I've got to get, get hop into in a few minutes. Okay, sure. Um, so for both Chris and Paul, real quick, what are some tips you would offer for uh, aspiring voice actors? How do you break into the industry? And, uh, what what tips would you would you give in terms of uh, of acting? Like I want to be a voice actor, and that's like my dream job. What tips take, do you have? You have got to take scene study classes. Mm -hmm. You've got to have the acting ability. Um, as you said at the beginning, it's not about having a good voice yeah. or for animation yeah. a funny voice. You've mm -hmm. got to be able to back that up with emotion. Mm -hmm. You've got to learn to take and process direction instantaneously. Um, and, and it really helps to be fun to work with. It's not a requirement, but it certainly brings light into the room because you have to consistently maintain energy for up to four hours. Right. And, and it's, I would much rather be around people that have smiles on their faces. Sure. For Very four serious. hours. I agree but, with but that. But really, <laughs> really, it's the acting chops. You have got to know mm -hmm. how to respond, how to, and it cannot sound like you're reading. Of course. That's my, my pet peeve right there. Of course. Paul? Uh, I, all of that, all of the above. And uh, I think mo most importantly, you have to meet someone that you're not really sure what they do um, and lick them on the back of the hand. <laughs> <laughs> uh, write this down, guys. Write this down. before I was a director, too. The, the and eventually they become this incredible director. <laughs> <laughs> well, you never know, right? You never know whose hand you're licking, you know. And I will, I will say that bribery does not work. <laughs> I, would, I don't know if licking a hand. I, I don't know if I would call that bribery. Bribery. 
But sometimes uh, you'll get gifts from someone you've okay. just met or someone okay. that just auditions you, and it's like, I don't want this. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't want this it, gift. It, I, I, I have no use for it, and it doesn't make you have an edge up. Gotcha. So gotcha. save that money and, you know. Yeah, right. go spend that on an acting workshop. That, that would be your gift to me. Great. <laughs> you know what? Just what's scary? I just what? realized that someone may have just tuned in right before I said what I did. Okay, <laughs> meet someone and lick them on the back of the hand without knowing our previous the context. <laughs> oh, uh, guys, man. it's not what it looks yeah, like. <laughs> yeah, yeah, make sure you watch the entire interview when it's archived yeah. later because it, it'll put everything into context. Yeah, um, but learn to act, be an actor. Yeah, yeah. great. Um, all right, yeah. so now I have a bunch of community questions. I'll just quick fire uh, your way. Um, one of, these are one or two sentence answers for you guys. Yeah, uh, okay. Alpha Hawk P from YouTube. Uh, do you uh, do you prefer for Paul? Do you prefer playing roles that are more in your normal range, like Campbell, or do you prefer doing exaggerated voices, like maybe stuff you do in cartoons or like in Skyrim? I think you did something a little more exaggerated. Uh, I enjoy working. You know, <laughs> okay. I knew you were going to say that. You know, I mean, I'm, that's the bottom line. Uh, uh, anything, if, if the writing is good, if I'm working with uh, a good cast, with fun people, but sometimes the, 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 the over-the-top stuff, I really love. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, the last Omniverse with, uh, in Ben 10, when I got to do four or five different characters, <laughs> yeah. totally different types of characters. <laughs> I love that stuff. Uh, I did a character for Chris years and years and years ago. Um, a, and I don't remember the character's name, but it was, I remember we put it on my voice tape. Uh, a guy who basically talks about brains and, and you know. I'll tell you exactly. That was the original who? two human. <laughs> Bingo. There we go. It was the original like, two human that never got up. made. <laughs> it never it was, got made. Well, they don't have changing to human and making it a a, a Nordic gods oh, project. Interesting. Uh, yeah. Hmm. So uh, yeah, it's all fun. Uh, the the ones that have the most life in them, I really enjoy. Or gotcha. that has give me the writing. If the right. writing is good. I'm happy. Great. Awesome. Quick quack reviews from YouTube. Uh, this is for uh, you, Chris. Is it true that James Horan spent only a uh, uh, like an hour and a half recording all his lines for uh, Phantom Pain. Because he, he, we, we interviewed him and he didn't really remember much about what he did. Anything. He, yeah, he's, he, it's he didn't joke really now. spend much time in the studio. He just, you know, did his thing and then that was that. He came several sessions. He came okay. to several sessions. Uh, a lot of his scenes were shorter. Okay. Mm-hmm. And so we would do what was needed in that group of, you know, sessions and then later do some more. Mm-hmm. Um, it, it wasn't one of the largest roles, but it did definitely take him longer than an hour and a half. Okay, cool. Okay, cool. There, there Sorry, we go. I, was there, I was there 22 days straight in December oh, without geez. a break. So, and that was just the end of it. So, um, oh, God. I'm wow. he there longer than an hour and a half. Any, anytime an actor comes on our show and says they can't remember something or they're like under NDA, we call it James Haranding us. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> well, that's that's job, what a good director. He, he was, it. <laughs> was still a great guy to interview, though. <laughs> that was funny, Paul. <laughs> It shows what a good director she is because the just time just flew by. <laughs> she has no idea how fast it was. <laughs> wow. Um, All right, y'all, go ahead. <laughs> uh, this is for Chris. This is actually some a question that I have. How do you react when lines like, they played us like a damn fiddle and such <laughs> lust for revenge, who become <laughs> such iconic lines? Everyone's oh just reciting God. that all over the internet. The line is awesome. It is awesome. Uh, that's just fun. It's, 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 when you can dig that out, it's just the best. <laughs> it is the best. You have no idea how many of those I got in my comment section. Yeah, right. Middle Gear here's, videos. here's what I say to Mr. Robin Atkin Downs, who is a dear friend of mine as well. Um, shut up, Miller. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. Yeah, I'll, I'll see his name on my phone and I'll answer it. I'll, go, I'll just say, shut up. I don't want to be talking. Shut up. <laughs> well, calling too much, Miller. 
<laughs> yeah, just that <gotta> Miller. <laughs> yeah, sometimes he does talk a lot. In There's an option to turn him off in the uh, in the game There's setting. Always that option. Oh, <laughs> I might look into <laughs> that. Damn fiddle, that was hysterical. It was oh, yeah. absolutely hysterical. Yeah. We're, wait, we're, when he recorded that line during the session, were you like laughing after that? Or? Yeah, it's like it, it just became a, an immediate. <laughs> okay. Iconic. That's yeah. awesome. It right. was it was iconic before it was even iconic. That's amazing. As it came out of his <laughs> mouth, it became iconic. <laughs> <laughs> okay. That's a good way to put it. Uh, Matty Boy from YouTube. Uh, Paul, do you have any recollection of voicing Kong the Mad in Jade Empire? If you do, can you tell us a bit about that? How was that like? Okay. Oh, I, I remember him. Uh, uh, I remember that one. Uh, I, I, I think I even have a picture of him on one of my... You know, mm -hmm. one of my headshot things. Cool. Uh, I don't remember much about the game. I mean, it's been a long yes. time ago. Yeah. Um, but I remember really having a good time with him. Great. Kang the Mad, yes. Yeah. Um, wish I could tell you yeah. more. But <laughs> I do remember it. And I was in there more than an hour and a half. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> He's James Arabian us right now. <laughs> Damn it. Nelson W. from YouTube. Uh, this is for you, Chris. Uh, was it your decision for David Hayter to use sort of an older snake voice uh, in Peace Walker? Uh, there's been countless debates on whether this was because uh, Hayter may or may not be able to do, to do the young voice anymore or because he was asked to do it that way. But he cleared it up that he could do it if he wanted yeah. to when he came on. Yeah. He still oh, he, Yeah, no, I don't remember why that was... Mm -hmm. Okay. Other than chronologically in the order of things. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I think but, uh, yeah. No, it wasn't because he couldn't do a younger voice. It okay. just was a decision. It wasn't my decision. Oh, okay. Gotcha. It's just what gotcha. they, they asked for. Okay. Yeah, okay. a lot of people were taken aback by just how old he sounded. Uh, like old Snake, he was sort of decrepit and he was sort of like basically withering away. And then Peace Walker, he's had sort of that same quality. And I think a lot of people were like, whoa, that, that's... Very, what happened to David? Yeah, what happened to David there? Uh, bronchitis. I mean, 20 years had passed. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> that is very true. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, uh, people interpret it different ways. Um, Netty08 from YouTube. Paul, has Square Enix asked you to voice Hojo for the Final Fantasy VII remake? No. <laughs> <laughs> well, here's the thing. This project is so early in development, though. I feel like it, you know, it's going to get there. Eventually. Uh, listen, I would... ask I would, me to direct, and I'll see to it. There we go. There <laughs> we go. Square Enix, get on it. Yeah, I, I would love to. Uh, what an... It's just an incredible game. I just... Mm -hmm. um, and the, the folks that I worked with are great. I, I, I tell a great story. I, I tell a story about the guy who, who was the... Uh, who was producing, directing that day. Mm -hmm. And I, I won't... It goes... It's a long story, but it, it's one of those stories where the guy was... From a little kid, he played the Final Fantasy. He knew Final Fantasy series. Mm -hmm. And here he was. He and his wife went to, to Japan to, uh, to teach in an American school. Ended up hearing about this uh, job opening. He jumped at the job opening. And what it was was, was uh, working for uh, developing fi Final Fantasy and writing it. Hmm. And now he was there he was back in the States directing it and producing it. And he was just like in wow. the hog heaven. That's it crazy. couldn't have been better. Awesome. So it was like one of those great stories. Anyway, I'd love to. Great. Square Enix. Yeah, yes. get on it. Uh, the yeah. shotgun. Call, call Quentin Flynn too while you're at it. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> uh, so this is my uh, last community question. The shotgun Bob from YouTube. Chris, who's your favorite Metal Gear character and what's your favorite uh, Metal oh. Gear quote? And I guess we could have this uh, apply to Paul as well. You can answer this. No as well. idea. I'll take your headset No idea. <laughs> <laughs> we don't want to. Okay, that. here's my favorite quote: "Snake, snake, snake." <laughs> it's all of our favorite quotes. <laughs> that was pretty from, good, though. From, from who, I though? That Which... I kind of, I kind of designed that myself. Oh, really? It was written on the script, but I like am the one that kind of told them to stretch it out and da 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 da, <laughs> and um, maintained that it was all the same throughout all the actors. And I even did a, a animated show for Disney called called fish hooks mm -hmm. and the fish that live in an aquarium went to go visit the snake aquarium or they think they're in the desert they think they're on a western <laughs> trip to the desert and all of a sudden one of them sees a snake and the line was just snake and i said Try i have to do something that. here and i put that <laughs> in fish Did you? wow i need to go they back and see that. i'm gonna look that up that's great that's hopefully great. it didn't get cut but that's what <laughs> wow um, um. 
you know, I love all my children. Of course. No, yeah, that, <laughs> you know, that's a perfect we have, uh, Otacon. We had him do it live for us yeah, all there. Yeah, Christopher <laughs> Randall. Yeah. I love I love Campbell, of course. I love I love Ocelot. Oh, yeah. Ocelot. Crazy ex husband, but I, I really <laughs> you know, it's um I love the I love that acting yeah. job that he did. Yeah. You know, uh, Lee Merriweather, um, it's endless. It's endless. Yeah, uh, you know, Jennifer and Debbie and, you know, all of them. All yeah, of them. They all do phenomenal. And of course you, uh, Paul Eiding. Yeah. I, I, I mean, said him. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, like the guy who did the voice of uh, uh, Colonel Campbell. <laughs> I tell you, it's just okay. good. Yeah. It's just Campbell's good. Okay. Yeah, what was he's... that someone that Barry Denon did? Fat, fat guy? Man. Fat oh, man. I love that character. Fat right, man. right, right. Oh man, Barry Denham. Um, yeah, and of course, you know, um, the one I get get requested the most is the. Uh, oh, right in, yeah. Uh, yeah, from from two, it's, you know, I hear it's amazing. Mm -hmm. You know, I hear <laughs> it's amazing. Not, is you're saying, Paul. <laughs> I hear it's amazing when the famous purple stuffed worm in flapjaw space with a tuning fork does a raw blink on Harry Carey rock. I need scissors. Sixty one. <laughs> that one I get more than anything else. Yes. But I also like you know you 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 know you create a time paradox. It's like yeah. there are just so many. <laughs> yeah. Or war so has so or is changed. You I know? thought it it's was like, funny that you said that because we had uh, Quentin and David here at the same time. Um, for an interview oh, as well, I'm sorry. and oh, <laughs> uh, it, I'm was, so sorry. it was hilarious because uh, Quentin was talking about how he loved Metal Gear Solid Two, and you know, because he's the star, and David was like, "I never played that one. I didn't like <laughs> that." <much." laughs> <laughs> uh, it was, yeah, it was absolutely yeah, hilarious. Yeah. We, we we were attempting to maybe schedule um, you, Paul, with um, a uh, an interview with David and Quentin. But uh, David said that particular interview was leads only, and so we weren't allowed. <laughs> <laughs> we weren't allowed to invite you or Christopher Red. <laughs> David would say that. He did I say that. Like, very funny. Very David. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, thank you guys so much for for doing this interview with us. Um, normally, well, thank you. It was we, fun. Yeah. When we uh, wrap up our interviews, we like to have. Um, Paul, you already know, we like to have people do a little quote from the games that they're in. Uh, Chris, I don't know if you're up for that. If you if you would love to, if you'd like to give us a, a voice of a particular character that you like, we could do that. Paul, um, I was thinking, unless y'all, unless you had something already planned out for him, I was hoping maybe we could get a... You have some here from Fallout 4 that I think uh, fans would love to hear. Awesome. I was, hoping, <laughs> I was hoping maybe, Paul, we could get you to do a custom one for us, because uh, we like to put the show up on YouTube when it's done. And uh, I was wondering if you could give us in your vault tech voice a, a hi, this is your character's name from vault tech and you're watching the codec. Does he have a name? I don't remember his... You can say Paul. Paul. Oh, no, I, I got it. Okay. Uh, you're okay. Okay. Right. Uh, you're watching the codec. The codec. Okay. You remember that ready? thing? Codec. That you ready? Thing you speak on. Yes, sir. Hi, Voltec calling. You're watching the codec. That's Perfect. great. Okay. <laughs> next line I have is. Um, Actually, you already said Voltec calling, so that works out just fine. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. I think that's what the last line you say in the uh, E3 presentation. Oh, good. Congratulations on being prepared for the future. <laughs> Great. Thank Wait you very minute. much. Isn't that that thing that you're not... Chris, yeah, uh, Chris Directed. ...did or not did? <laughs> but those, lines are, those lines were shown at E3, so we're yeah. okay. Yeah. But, okay. <laughs> Yeah, that's that's the only reason yeah. I know them. They were uh, they were shown off. <laughs> Chris, do you have any voices you'd like to do for us? You have like a favorite character that you've done? No. <laughs> uh... Come on, you're in so you've done so many additional voices. You could do something. No, I mean they're usually soldiers or whatever. Well, we're a soldiery show. It make it, it will fit perfectly. All right. Okay. You're going to cut this if it's no good, okay? Right. You got it. You're the director. Right. <laughs> Hi, this is Ms. Marigold from World of Liberty, and you're listening to The Codec. That was amazing. great. That's perfect. Okay, that's I mean, great. That's, yeah, that's yeah. great. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Um, well, All right, just go. All right. Uh, Campbell, we're listening to The Codec. Take one. 
That's it. Okay. Snake. <laughs> Snake, Snake. Snake, where are you? (laughs) Hey! Anyways, thank you guys so much for for coming on the show. We're going to go offline here, guys, but um, Chris and Paul, if if I could spare like one more minute of your time offline, I'd like to ask you a quick question, but I don't want to ask on the air. So uh, those of you... Uh (laughs) Uh-oh. Those of you who are watching, thank you so much. Uh, Chris and Paul, is there anything else you'd like to say to the fans before we get out of here? Thank you so much for being fans of our game. Yep. Grateful. Grateful. Uh, hang with us. There's, uh, I don't think there's been one as good as this. And I'm just really proud to have been part of it. And, and Young, hope- have a great show. Oh, thank Definitely. you. Yeah, enjoy your play. We'll do. All right, guys. You. We'll be right back uh, thank you, everybody. on the codec. And don't go anywhere. We'll be right back. Bye, guys.